Assuming this bill even gets to the House, what do you believe your progressive colleagues are going to do here? I know you like this hard infrastructure bill. Well, you're right, Stephanie, and we, the Problem Solvers Caucus have been working with our Senate colleague for months on this. And I'll tell you, this will come to the House and there will be a vote and it will pass. And, and I really believe at the end of the day, when you have the largest infrastructure package in a century, with the president behind it and a bipartisan group in the Senate passing it, uh, we're going to pass it. And, uh, and it's going to bring a lot of help to communities all across the country, including every single member of Congress, right? Whether that's roads, rails, water infrastructure, green energy, you, you name it when it comes to investing in infrastructure, hard infrastructure in our country, you know, we, we really help bring it in this package. And, and I believe we will deliver it in the House. Brian, Republicans have been big on making sure this thing is paid for. The list the White House put out includes unused COVID money, corporate user fees, taxes on cryptocurrency, and just general economic growth. Is that good enough? It's good enough for me. It's good enough for the majority of uh, our Problem Solvers Caucus. I can tell you that, Stephanie. And, and basically, um, the, the entirety of the bill is paid for. About half of the paid fors are what they call heart dollars, dollar for dollar offsets. The other half are things that are legitimate paid fors, but aren't necessarily scored by by um, a CBO. So a, an example of that would be states that refuse to accept unemployment insurance money. Uh, that money has been appropriated and allocated, but unused. That's a, a very legitimate paid for, but that's something that's not scored. So these are the conversations that occur with my, uh, myself and Josh and our House colleagues, as well as our Senate colleagues. Uh, I will tell you, Stephanie, uh, me and Josh met this morning. We've spoken to our Senate colleagues but from both parties this morning. And we talked to the White House, both of us, last night. Uh, we feel very good about where it's at right now. Josh, Democrats had said there was no unused COVID money. What changed? Well, I think when actually you went through it and went through line by line, as you know, there's a lot of investment over the last uh, year and a half. And, and, and thankfully, you saw good numbers uh, again this morning. The economy, unemployment is down. Uh, uh, and the economy is, is getting, getting back to work, that's all very good. And there are places where, in the end, we didn't need to utilize resources that we had allocated. So we're going to put those dollars to work for hard infrastructure here, whether that's Stephanie, our rail, our transit, the tunnel between the gateway tunnel between New York and New Jersey, uh, water infrastructure or broadband. There are places that can re directly use these dollars and these resources, and, and that's what helped pay for this package. Uh, it, it's why it's so important and, and what the president, is, as was said earlier in, in the reporting, the president ran on both sides coming together to show that we can get stuff done and govern in this country. It's why it's so important we get this across the finish line, and I believe we will. I know there's going to be plenty of, as you pointed out, Stephanie, plenty of work to do before we get to the finish line, but we are way on our way, and, and I think the momentum is on our side here. Brian, we know the American people want this stuff done, but in the past 48 hours alone, things on the Hill have gone from bad to worse in terms of toxicity. Nancy Pelosi calling Kevin McCarthy a moron, a bunch of Republicans absolutely lying, calling out Nancy Pelosi, A, for the mask mandate, but B, blaming her for January 6th, which is categorically false. Given the level of vitriol on the Hill, do you really believe in this environment you're going to get lawmakers to work together and they're not going to stick a knife in it in the end. Former President Donald Trump is pushing against this thing. Yeah, we don't have a choice, Stephanie. We have to get past it. And that's exactly what our caucus believes. That's why we're so unique. I wish we weren't unique in Congress. I wish, uh, as Josh always says, we didn't need a problem solvers caucus. It's just called Congress. Uh, right now, we have a lot of uh, very, very strident personalities that are using language that Josh and I in our caucus don't approve of. Uh, but we got to be leaders. Leaders come, they lower the temperature of the discourse, and they bridge the gap between differences. Uh, and if anybody in a, leader posi a leadership position is not doing both of those, then they're falling short of their responsibilities. So we have to lead by example. We treat us, uh, each other with respect and civility. We respect each other's opinions. That's how any functional relationship in our lives work. That's how Congress needs to work. That's what our Problem Solvers Caucus stands for. And, and Stephanie, let me I add feel to that. you. I hear you. Except that's not how it works, Josh. Like, let's just be totally honest. Like, I just don't want to have a dance party about this thing, knowing that Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy could be talking a really good game about bipartisanship and then bailing at the last minute. It's what Mitch McConnell does. There's so much invested here by so many people. It's why you saw when the fact that you saw Mitch McConnell come out and back this, and so many members, 67 senators, come out and back this last night. That's a big deal, Stephanie, and something that you don't see that often. 
And I think it's whatever the, you know, was reported on that the problem is people don't expect it anymore, so they think it's impossible. Brian's exactly right. It's going to take leadership to get done. They're going to people, be people who keep sniping and making comments. And, and frankly, we just got to keep going and working together and bringing the coalition together. You saw that happen in the Senate. We're going to get it done in the House. It doesn't mean that people aren't going to oppose it, right? There's going to be a lot of noise. But at the end of the day, we're going to get it and bring it across the finish line. And it's going to take Democrats and Republicans. And that's exactly what the Problem Solvers Talk is about. Brian is exactly right in terms of us having to, we're going to have to work it very hard. But I, the, you should have heard the, the feelings last night were what you'd want to have in Washington and exactly what the American people want. They want to know that we can actually get things done. And, and this is going to be a great example when this is signed into law.